Now that we've talked about the key classes in the Project Reactor API, let's take a look at the key classes in the Rx Java API. There are three key classes in the Rx Java API. The first class is called the single, which completes successfully or with failure, and which may or may not emit a single value. And this is very similar to Java completable future or to an async optional, or now that you've been exposed to the Project Reactor API, it's somewhat similar to the mono class in the Project Reactor API. And we'll talk a lot about this later and show many of its operations and, and show how you can use it in practice. You can document the way the behavior of a single with a marble diagram also as shown in the link at the bottom of this slide. As with Project Reactor, the timeline of a single is shown from time flowing from left to right. An optional item can be emitted by the single if all goes well. The dotted line that's shown here and the box indicate that a transformation is being applied to the single. And the name inside the box indicates what the transformation is. It's going to be mapped, of course, to a method in the single API. This single will be the result of the transformation. You get a new single back. The vertical line will indicate that the single completed successfully. And if things go amiss or awry, then there'll be the arrow, or rather an X will be replaced to indicate that something's gone wrong. There are many operations that are provided by singles, factor method operations, transforming operations, action operations, concurrency and scheduler operations, combining operations, suppressing operations, and blocking operations, as well as others. Many of these operations are very similar to what you see in Project Reactor, though by no means all. And that's something else we'll be covering in this course is the, the differences between Rx Java and Project Reactor, because there are some, and it's very important to understand those distinctions. There's also another variant of a single called a maybe, and it may emit a single value, it may emit no value at all, or it may throw an exception. And we'll see where maybes get used. They typically get used in cases where operators may have no values whatsoever because the other parts of RxJava's type system don't have any input to them. For example, if you're going to do an operation that's going to multiply elements in a stream together, if there are no elements in the stream to multiply, then you're going to get back something called a maybe, which in that case would emit no value at all. And we'll, we'll talk about that and show some examples later. There is no such equivalent in Project Reactor. The next type that's important in RxJava is something that's called the observable. And it emits an indefinite number of events from zero to infinite, and it may complete sex successfully, or it could also fail. It's very similar to an async Java stream, where you might have completable futures used with the Java sequential stream in order to be able to have a stream of asynchronous processing operations. It's also somewhat akin to a flux in Project Reactor, although we'll see some important differences as we dive a little deeper later. You can also document an observable with a marble diagram. As with flux, there's a timeline where time flows from left to right for an observable. These are the items that the observable will emit, and the dotted line in the box indicate that a transformation is being applied to the observable. The specific transformation or the, the method itself is given as the name inside the box, and what you get as a result will be a new observable that will contain the results of whatever transformation took place. If everything goes well, then there's an indication that the observable completed successfully, but if something goes awry or something goes amiss, then the indication for that is with an X, a red X. As with Flux, there's lots of operations. It's a, it's a little repetitive, so I won't keep going through this in detail, but basically the same types of operations you'd expect to find in a Flux are also found in an observable, factory methods, transforming operations, and so on and so forth. And once again, they're very similar, though not identical, between RxJava and Project Reactor. So if you're gonna be programming with reactive streams, you'll eventually have to understand the subtle differences between these different classes. The final important class that's part of the Rx Java API is known as a flowable. And this actually came a little bit later after single and observable. And it's basically like an observable, except it's been enhanced or generalized to support so-called back pressure. And as we've talked about before, back pressure is this type of flow control that can be used by consumers or subscribers to indicate to a publisher how much data can be consumed. So you, you might have a subscriber say, 
hey, I can have three things come to me before I'll be kind of busy or full. And then the publisher will go ahead and say on next, on next, on next three times. And then at least ideally, hopefully that'll mean that the subscriber can wait uh, and process everything, not wait, but it can process everything. And when it's done with that processing, it can then request the publisher and send it the next chunk or the next batch. So this is a form of what's called back pressure. And you can read more about back pressure at the link at the bottom of the slide. So that's the end of the overview of some of the key classes in the Rx Java API. There's a couple other ones as well that I didn't really go into, things like completable. We will talk more about completable when the time is right a little bit later in this course.